First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Hey, 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 welcome oh back. God. Episode five, All That You Woo! Can't Leave Behind. Air date, October 21st, 2003. Oh that was dramatic. We had a lot of interesting stuff <laughs> happen in this episode. I'm yes. exhausted. Lots of frankly. dramatic Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> It really was. Between the basketball and the and the Peyton like dealing with her intense pain about her mother and mm. we find out so much about Whitey in this episode. Mm. Lucas wanted to change his last name. I mean, there was yeah. a lot of moving forward with storylines here. Mm-hmm. So Ooh. this episode is when Lucas asked Keith to play with him in the annual father-son basketball game, which I just love. Mm. And Dan humiliates mm-hmm. Nathan. And kind of himself Ugh. on the court. It's painful. Really himself. Oof. Really himself more than anyone. Yeah. Um, and really big deal that we should talk about, which is that Peyton marks the anniversary of her mother's death. And this is the famous mm. running of the red lights episode. My favorite part of filming this episode, and no one knows this, is that during all that stuff on the bridge with Chad and with Whitey, there was an old man whose backyard butted up to the bridge and he oh, no. hated that we were there and he wanted <gasps> no part of us there. And he would just stand in his backyard and would wait for no. us to yell action. And then he'd start a weed whacker and he would no. just no. stand there. <laughs> he would just stand there with the weed whacker going. And I remember just standing there for like hours with the sun bearing down on us. And we're trying to like make oh nightfall. God. And this guy is like, wait for it. Wait for it. Action. Oh, and so we sent Didn't someone. Did anybody want to go tell him? Oh, babe. We oh, sent yeah, multiple sent people what? over to him and he would threaten them with the weed whacker like it was a sword. Um, yeah. So I love Didn't background Didn't they tell noise. him the kind of scene that you were trying to film <laughs> about like a young woman getting advice from her grandfatherly no, he, he, figure? And we were like an ocean of grief. Traffic. We were being oh, yeah. messy. Oh. I mean, there's nothing fun about a film production coming into your neighborhood. You know, like you can't just <laughs> run your errands and they're making noise and there's riffraff looking in your backyard. What if you're trying giant, to bury a body giant back lights. there? Yeah. Oh, well, man. Yeah. It's also so interesting to me, though, that... People who want to take a stand like that, and I, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and just be honest. You're being very kind to said <laughs> rude old man. Because it's like, dude, we're just doing our jobs. And you're, I get it. You don't like that we're here, but also you guys are up on the bridge. You weren't actually even on his street. You were like no. a full <laughs> story above where he lived. And, and it's so... Bringing in money for the town. Yeah, bringing in money for the town. Also creating jobs. I, I will never forget... Similar situation when when I was working in Illinois and there was this guy who refused to get off his porch, just wouldn't move. And he'd been really nasty to a couple of the PAs on the show. And I was like, well, let me go talk to him. Like, maybe he's also annoyed that we're like, (laughs) you know, sending over these 22 year old kids to chat with him. He's an older gentleman. And I walked over and I just said, hey, sir, I just I'm I'm the one in the scene tonight. And I want to see, you know, what's going on. And, And can I is there any information I can give you that maybe someone else hasn't given to you? And he goes, I didn't sign off on this. And I didn't okay you to shoot the front of my house. And I said, well, we pulled a permit for the whole street. And that's something we do with the city. And it's something our location department manages. So it is legal. And just so you know, we're, you know, all the way at the other end of the block. We can't really even see your house. But, you know, in the shot, you kind of take a look. Do you want to be an actor? (laughs) Yeah, you kind of look like a creepy ghost, just like silhouetted (laughs) in these lights at the back of the shot. And. It's a little unnerving to people. And, you know, it would be cool if you wouldn't mind, since we did work with the city, if, if you could just not be on the porch and do us a favor, because we've got 200 people out here shooting in the middle of the night and it's cold. And he goes, well, I want $500 then. <laughs> and that's when I was like, I'm going to, Sophia's going to be right back and someone else is going to come talk to you for five minutes. And I just went, sir, to put that in perspective, our PAs make 500 bucks a week. So if you think that wow. you, who is standing here on the porch of a four million dollar townhome in the wealthiest part of oh Chicago, my God. is going to get five hundred dollars, oh my God! 
in a suit, by the way, and like a really nice jacket. And I was like, if you think we're going to give you $500 when that is money that could go to one of the kids who can't afford yeah. a warm enough jacket on our set, you're out of your mind. And then he started screaming. And I was like, well, this has been really fun. And uh, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see you later, relevant. mister. <laughs> we don't well, need just to put all of this in our show. But man, oh, man. Our show definitely didn't shoot in fancy pants neighborhoods. I think like. Brooke's house and Nathan's mm-hmm. house are in nice neighborhoods, but everything else yeah. is in downtown Wilmington, which is pretty, I mean, it's very diverse and yeah. certainly not anything, you know, highfalutin. They're older homes from like the 20s and 30s uh, over where well, the bridge Wilmington's is. Wilmington's not a fancy town. That's part of why it's so charming and yeah. so special. And overall, everyone seemed happy. Everyone yeah. seemed happy, but it it just goes to show that it definitely was a film <laughs> town because the honeymoon had worn off. They were like, "We've had movies film in here for twenty yeah. years, kid. We're not. Oh, we've had John anymore. Travolta here. You get out. <laughs> You're not new. <laughs> That's oh what it is. You're God. not John Travolta. Yeah. Who are you crying on They're the like, bridge? Oh, get out oh of my here. Lord. Okay. Well, let's move on to some storyline <laughs> stuff. So, we, oh, so yes. we have just um, we have uh, okay, Lucas confronting Haley and mm. and the is it the first time we see the golf course on the roof or did we see that in the last episode no, I, I feel like we that. saw it in the pilot right hmm. oh in the pilot that's right but Lucas and Karen yeah. it gets bigger every time that we see it it was like they had fun building that one out with the Christmas lights and I know turf. I wish we'd gotten to be up there more it was so fun up there I, I don't know why they didn't continue to have us do a lot of work up there because it was such a good, unique set. I hadn't, I haven't seen that in a TV well, show. Well, and it's before. not like it bogeys cool. could come up and throw weed whackers at you on the roof. <laughs> it was a right. safe space. You weren't going to get chased around with lawn equipment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone coming after you with a trimming shear, edge clippers. Oh my god. <laughs> god! I don't remember when that went away either because I do remember in later seasons filming up on that roof and there wasn't a mini golf course. And I remember some of us who never got to film on it were really sad yeah. when it left, but I can't remember when that was. Yeah, I mean, I went up there to throw water either. balloons with you in season five, six, uh, yeah. and there wasn't there wasn't there wasn't a golf course up there. I wonder. We got cheated. That's what happened. We got cheated. Damn it. <sighs> oh yeah. We got cheated. It's so weird watching this back all these years later because this is mm-hmm. the one like character beat that my son, who's never seen the show ever, like this is the thing that Gus knows. He's like, Peyton Sawyer sits in her car and she cries and she runs red lights. <laughs> and my son knows that about the character. Wow. wow. And, and, you know, he's 11. That's just, you know, what is visible to someone who ne- hasn't necessarily sat down and watched the show. Mm-hmm. And I think this is the beginning of where I just... I got really uncomfortable on the show because Peyton became this like garbage bag for horrible things happening, right? Mm. But then never ever went to therapy, Mm -hmm. never like really got help. And so Mm -hmm. it starts with like her mom dying and then she's assaulted and then there are other, you know, Ellie dies and there's all these like very traumatic things happening to a child. And for me over the years, a lot of people have come up whether it's at like conventions or just on the Mm. street. And they said, I was going through this horrible thing and your character helped me process it. And I'm like, I want to feel responsible for that. And then like, great. Yes. I'm so glad that our TV show could help you through it. But also I wish we had modeled Mm. a better response. I wish we had modeled like actually getting help because you don't just get Mm. better on your own. You don't just kiss a boy and wake up the next day and it's all fixed, you know, like there's, it's it's long term trauma. And so I I don't know, I hope that television now, you know, mm-hmm. in twenty twenty one is doing a better job of like making that acceptable, making it the norm. Mm-hmm. Peyton absolutely should have been in a therapist's office. Absolutely. And and Hill, I hear you on that. It's like it's really emotional for all of us when people say, You represented X and it helped me process Y. Like that is a that's an enormous responsibility that we don't take lightly mm-hmm. and it and it can be kind of confusing to carry because on the one hand you're like I'm I'm honored to have helped you shoulder that and on the other you're like I don't know if we did this well enough yeah but I will say you know in 2003 we weren't having conversations like we are now about mental health yeah and I think even the fact that the unsaid you know the the generally unrepresented, the the quote unquote bad or negative 
was even being given airtime, like mm-hmm. that someone's suffering, that it struck me watching you play that those scenes and how beautifully you did. And like, oh, I just wanted to hug that little girl. Like, you just look like such a sweet baby, <laughs> just crying in that car. And like, oh, it, it broke my heart because you made it so clear that this kid was in the ocean of grief. And that's what grief is. It's so big. It can feel unending and it comes in waves. And I felt for you so much. And then like the camp counselor part of my brain was like, oh no, we modeled running red lights for kids. Oh my God. Mm. Right. And, and, and when, we, just a when we were watching, yeah. And when the three of us were watching guys, and this feels really important to highlight for all of you at home, we were all kind of taken aback because what you don't see obviously in a show that's edited and made to make it's you like have an emotional minutes, response. Yeah. Yeah. It, you don't see that on every one of those side streets, there were cop cars, mm-hmm. barricades, lockups, PAs. Like we shut the streets down so that you could drive on an empty road yeah. through red lights. And for a visual. The, for right, the visual. right. And yeah, the vis- just to drive yes, the and point the, the, home. It wasn't really, mm-hmm. you know, they thought of it it's as a, a metaphor. Yeah. yeah. It hurts it, so bad. Right. Don't do this at home. Right. Yeah. And you weren't actually wildly running red lights. That was all set up. And it kind of hit us like, oh, God. Looking back, you go, well, what does that mean? God forbid we ever encouraged you know, someone to do that. God forbid, like I said, a couple episodes ago, I encouraged people to get naked in back seats. Please don't do it. There's me having to make a joke because I'm feeling very emotional and uncomfortable right now. Yeah, but babe, yeah. uh, Just the weight of it at 21 years old is like, what am I responsible for? But you hit the nail on the head, Hillary, with saying that because you have to have, characters have to have flaws. They have to have uh, Mm -hmm. deep moments. And, you know, that's what people loved about the show is that they were just feeling their feelings Mm -hmm. and going through it. But the fact that we didn't model um, the, the taking care of your mental health of Peyton sitting down mm-hmm. with a therapist and somebody walking her through that grief and the idea for me of my daughter being that age and feeling so much grief that she would put her life in that mm-hmm. kind of danger to just like uh, I'm that. I'm verklempt. I can't I don't know how to process Aww. this, mm-hmm. but, you know, it, it's, it's mm-hmm. not. Yeah, go ahead. It's heavy for a teen show. I mean, it started Mm -hmm. off about like basketball, you know? And so I think also part of the reason I have since then portrayed myself as such a goober when I'm being Hillary Burton is because Peyton Sawyer was so dark and, Mm. and so, so anguished and sad that I felt like I had to overcompensate you know, in real life in, in doing interviews, even now, I'm always the first person to be like, OK, this feels like a lot. Let's let's get out of this <laughs> um, because I was scared of that. Like you said, Sophia, that ocean of grief. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I certainly have lost people in real life. I know the people mm-hmm. I was thinking about when uh, when we filmed these things and mm-hmm. and yeah, they're. It's heavy. We also mm-hmm. talked about when we watched the episode back how Craig Sheffer dealt with yep. this very same thing of doing a risky behavior in a production um, in the program. How old were mm-hmm. we? Were we in middle school when that came out? We were young. I think so. We were really young. I didn't even see it until years. I mean, it was like an old movie. I've yeah. never, the time I've never I seen saw the program. It think, oh, man. Oh, joy. It's yeah. beautiful. Ooh. Well, t- I mean, it's tell about us. a high school football team. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. And I just remember being all over the news. The news was saturated mm-hmm. with it because in the movie, these boys had laid down on the road on as, the like a, lines. as like a dare or something. No. And some kids emulated that and were killed <gasps> in real mm-hmm. life. And and I remember Ugh. thinking about it, like when we were doing the running the red light thing, just like, mm-hmm. oh, God, like this is, I wish I'd talked to Craig about it. Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't have the placards mm-hmm. back then that would come up before the show. You know, this, exactly. this episode is triggering, deals with trauma, you know, please don't emulate the things, the characters, blah, 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 what, all that stuff that comes up yeah. now. We weren't doing mm-hmm. that back then. 
So yeah, yeah you were right I to think, be nervous. I think the program might have been one of the reasons that shows started to say we did this with stunt drivers and on closed sets. And wow. Those placards came up because, you know, people used to see something and go, oh, they just went out and did that. Now we have a lot more transparency behind how productions work yeah. and and even to the point of the conversation, there's more transparency behind and around mental health, around, I mean, the fact that we can even speak about trauma now. Yeah. We weren't doing that 20 years ago. It was very brown paper, bag, bottom shelf. And and I'm so relieved that we live in a time and and in a moment where people are being met where they are and where vulnerability um, is understood to be a strength. Thank you, Brene Brown. <laughs> Not that you're listening, but if you are, we love you. Hey, love girl. You. And, uh, hey what, girl. You know what I loved um, is that is that Peyton did get um, therapy of sorts by talking with Whitey so much in this episode. And mm-hmm. that, yeah. that grandfatherly mm-hmm. figure that, again, we said, you know, wow, could never happen. You could never have a older male coach spending any time alone with a young female student. It would just be wildly inappropriate. Um, and in most cases it is, but I think with the, we're on a show and it's all romanticized. With the right way. chemistry. The right, yes. It is loving. Yes. You know, the way he talks, I think it's the, because Whitey's talking about Camilla. Yeah. It, it it's very safe. cuts the creep factor Completely. out that mm-hmm. might exist in yeah. other productions. Whitey so dearly loves his wife yeah. and misses her in the same way mm-hmm. Peyton misses her mother. Um, and having and a grandfatherly scenes, figure, like a, a male yeah. figure who is positive in her life, I think was also really important. Mm-hmm. It also shows he, how unmoored she is, though, that mm-hmm. she doesn't have a mom. She doesn't have a dad. She doesn't have a grandma or a grandpa or anybody. Mm-hmm. She's got to go to the high school basketball coach oh. like this dude she doesn't know yeah it without saying any of that it speaks mm-hmm. volumes yeah and and it it was such a beautiful i think choice in the story arc of the episode to have whitey stand in for her dad you know and and in a way it it felt at least as a viewer like peyton probably hadn't been able to really process the loss of her mom with her father, but being able to be with Whitey, who'd also lost his wife, they they could share in it. And sometimes it is a little easier to be more vulnerable with someone who's not quite as close to you. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. him being that that fatherly figure in the episode, there, there's so much of this kind of um, mirroring of father figures in, in this one with Oh, Whitey yeah, you, God, you're making a with, great point. With Craig, you know, with, with Keith for Lucas. I mean, him saying Lucas having this question about whether or not he's going to change his name because of what it represents because of Dan Scott. And Keith reminds Lucas that it's his name, too, mm-hmm. and that it's a thing they share and and that family can be who you choose. I mean, it's so beautiful. And, and so you get those two kind of being the best of it. And then you get Dan Scott being <sighs> absolute, like— just piggish worst. Oh, I mean him on the it's basketball a, it's a court. different kind of mental problem, you know, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. like the grief <laughs> and the anguish are one thing. And then the, you know, that, that ego, mm-hmm. the ego and the, and the obsession with the glory days can really be so toxic. Like you, you get great masculinity in Whitey and in Keith and you get true toxic masculinity in Dan Scott. I love being that able scene, to see the both guys, of them too. With, the two mm. of Paul and and Barbara in that scene where he's talking about the glory days Ooh. was probably one of my favorite scenes of the episode yeah. because you see why she loved him. Mm-hmm. He's fun. Mm-hmm. You can see why she will hate him. Yeah. Like it, the, the, <laughs> it's a microcosm of the whole show yeah. in that one scene. <laughs> and it, and it also like kind of foreshadows all the problems that the Scott yeah. boys have in their future relationships. Yeah. I mean, that moment, the foreshadowing when she and Barbara played it so beautifully because she didn't freak out. You just see it land mm. and she takes a half a breath and says better than, I mean, I don't remember the exact line, but essentially better than now, better than knowing me, knowing your son. And you just go, <gasps> oh. and he says, it was different. After that pause, 
pause. Good, that pregnant different. pause. Oh God. <laughs> Joy, you oh, stab man. him. Honestly, like, what would you do if your partner said that? Man, apparently I slam doors. I, That's my thing. I would. Yeah, yeah, every oh. door in the house would be off its hinges. Oh my mm. god! Yeah, no, I would. I would leave the room and probably never go back. I don't know that I could handle that. <laughs> See, everyone assumes I'd scream and yell because Brooke Davis was a good yeller. You know, she could throw it. She could throw a thing really well. I just get really quiet. And the more quiet I get, the more trouble you're in. Yeah, I'm the same way. It's like, (laughs) okay, I'm just going to go for a walk. Yeah. There will be poison Mm -hmm. in your coffee in the morning. (laughs) That's such a good... You will wake up with no eyebrows and know that you did it to yourself. (laughs) (laughs) That's such a good mom tool, by the way. Yeah, the quieter I get, the more Maria's like, what? What? Mom? Mom? What? What? (laughs) Poor baby. (laughs) 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 Oh, man. Guys, can we just love on Deb just more? Uh, I love her. Yeah. Such a boss. Being a boss and a baddie. Deb Scott, I think, is the only mom who also wore Juicy Couture tracksuits uh-huh. in, yeah. in fancy yeah. velour like we did, oh, girls. Yeah. Wait, when she comes velour. on in this episode in that red juicy <sighs> outfit, we all started screaming. Are we bringing them back? <laughs> I mean, I'm not opposed. I'm, down. I'm not opposed to I'm it. Down. I love with a tracksuit. You have to wear them with Uggs. <laughs> <laughs> and the spaghetti strap tank top underneath. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, should we? We have uh, we have an exciting guest today um, oh who God. can talk to us a lot more about that juicy tracksuit. It um, might be someone we, we all have a crush on. Get her in here. Get her in. Bring Get me her some dead. Where's Barbara Allen Woods? Barbara. Ding, 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 ding. Barbara, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> there you are. Oh. Hi. You look beautiful, Barbara. Oh. You're so beautiful. You don't age. Holy smokes. Hi, gorgeous. Hi. Hi. We miss you. Uh, are you calling us from a trailer? Are you on set today? What's going on? Uh, Where oh, are you? Oh, no. I knew this was going to happen. Oh, Hi. I love you. <laughs> Hi. We love you so much. Where Hi. are you? Um. Okay, so this is the first day ever, I think, that I've sent my daughter off to work alone. <gasps> Um, she's Aww. working. I'm not working today because of you guys. Thank you so much. Um, no, I'm not mm. working today. Well, I'm working. I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> this Hi. is a better game. Hi. This is fun. <laughs> Wait, where are you guys? What are you working on? So I'm in Toronto <gasps> with Allie and we're working on a show together. <gasps> Tell us everything That's about the so show. Exciting. We'll get I'm back into One Tree Hill, but I want to know what's going on okay. right now. Yeah. So I, Hillary, you know this about us. Maybe you all do, but you know, our family is way into like horror, the horror genre, yeah. horror, anything. And um, this opportunity came up for Allie to do this show, Chucky. Yes. Um, and so oh, it's based yes. on the puppet, the doll oh. Chucky. And it's, you know, about his origin story. And um, and she plays the mean girl, which she's never done. And she was thrilled to do. And then when she was cast, the producers came to me and said, you know, hey, you know, we need the mean mom. And do you want to play her mom? And no. so, yeah, we've been in Toronto since March and we're doing a show together. That is such a oh, dream gig. What a dream. And I'm yeah. playing the mayor. I love yes. it. Which is so full circle. Yeah, Deb oh, should have yes. been the mayor. Deb should have always been the mayor. Oh, yes. Why did that not happen? Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, um, so we're having yeah. a great time. Oh my gosh. I can't this is believe incredible. that Olivia is old enough to be working because one of my favorite, favorite memories of Barbara on the show was in my last season, and I knew that I was cutting out. And Barbara asked me to drive her to a doctor's appointment while she was pregnant with Olivia to get her amnio done. And so they like did the whole s- scan of the belly and like and you, you were so intrigued. You were so into it. I wanted you had a that. lot of questions. You well, had a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was so special. I felt really honored that you asked me to like drive you. And it was such a cool thing because I'd never seen a doctor's appointment. I didn't ask you to drive me. I wanted you to be there with me. 
And mm. it was bonding. It was bonding for us. It was a really special experience. And so then when I got pregnant, like six months later, <laughs> I, <remember laughs> I, know. I called, I, I like sent Barbara a message. I was like, hey, I have a friend who's having a baby. <laughs> yeah. And we're sitting to that doctor and you were like, well, you can tell your friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it wasn't slick, but it was just such a special it was such a special memory. And so to see all of your girls taking over all of television is just insane. It's so cool. They're the new generation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they are. They are who you guys were during One Tree Hill. And that's why I feel like this is such great timing for me mm -hmm. because, you know, they're going through a lot of the things that I've been listening to. Your po I'm so proud of all of you. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'm proud and I love the podcast and I'm learning even more about you guys and the fact that you went through so much and that you were all the picture of confidence. Mm. Never once did I ever realize you were having any self-doubt at all, even for a second. Wow. And that makes me sad in a way, because I feel like if I could go back, I would have, my doors were always open, but I would have said to yeah. all of you, please come to me. You know, I've been around for a while. Please come to me for, but you didn't seem like you needed any advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, that's just sort of our makeup individually as people. We were, you know, we really wanted to have it all together and we didn't want anybody to know that we were struggling yeah. and maybe different girls would have, but I, I know each of us individually were, we were all a little stubborn in our own ways and probably just <laughs> didn't want to, probably just didn't want to admit Ooh, that we us. didn't know what to do, but your door yeah. was always open, Barbara. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, was. You were the mom that none of us had down there in, in that environment. You, I mean, my God, you helped me put my cat down. I remember you came know, over that I day know. and you were there with me when I had to put my cat down. And I, I was like, who do I want with me? And I remembered, it was just so clear. I, I need, I need mom. I need Barbara. Mm, <laughs> and you, you were that for us in every way. So no, please don't think that we didn't come to you for any reason that we didn't feel comfortable with you. It was mm. totally just us needing to... I don't know, feel like we were taking care of it. Remember, we oh, were adults, yeah. guys. We were totally grown yeah, we were. Right. And now I see my daughters being adults, mm -hmm. but they're your age. And I know they must be going through that same, you yeah. know, growing up experience of being alone for the first time. And, you know, I have a, and Gossip Girl, Emily's doing Gossip Girl. Mm -hmm. How That's crazy right. is about, that? That's so insane. Full circle. So, so she's doing the first season and I compare it to the first season of One Tree Hill. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy how life comes around, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like it's different for these kids now than it was for us, you know, 18 years ago? No, I don't think it's different. Um, in terms of just growing up in general, I don't think it's different. But mm. first of all, she's on HBO. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that can be a little scary. Oh. Um, when she booked the job, she was 17. And she thought, oh, whew, it was like James. HBO... Yeah. HBO can be a little scary. Yeah. You know, it's Gossip Girl. So it's going to be a lot of, yeah. you know, risque romance. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but she was 17. She said, oh, no problem, because they can't have me do anything anyway. Well, then it ha quarantine happened yeah. and the show got pushed. And so when she started working, she <gasps> was 18. Oh, like, oh, OK, um, that's hard to figure out what your boundaries are going to be and exactly. what you want to allow, you know, out there in the public in terms of your body or what situations yeah. you want to put yourself in as an actress. And, and it's different for everyone, but it's hard to figure that stuff out when you're a yeah. young, young woman. And I've told her stories about you guys and your, mm -hmm. you know, your questions and don't be, don't ever be afraid to question. And, you know, I'm glad that she has me to turn to, yeah. but it's also gives me the responsibility of giving her the correct advice, mm. you know? So yeah, it's some, um, it's tough for young women. You have always done that for people though. And mm -hmm. it, it strikes all of us, you know, I mean, we, we, we were saying on our last recording that we're basically just the Barbara Allen Woods fan club Aww. because all we're doing is <laughs> fawning over you in these episodes. And we, I think it struck all of us in our own way that we know you to be that woman in life, but we forgot because none of us remembers 2003, my God, we forgot what you were doing on screen and, and the way that you play Deb, it just feels clear that you brought yourself and, and your Barb heart to her because she's so wise and she holds lines for people and does it with tenderness and, and you challenge people to be, better and 
And it, I don't know, you're able to do so much with her. And we're, we're just, we're obsessed with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. And I say all of that in season one. And then she sort of had a downward spiral. <laughs> well, it was such a which, crazy arc. I, know. Which I loved. Yeah. I loved. <laughs> so fun. So fun. Well, we want to talk. So let's talk a little bit about how, first of all, how you got the role of Deb. Was it just mm. a random audition? Was it, did you know it? I mean, like, how did that come about? And then also yeah. once you were into the part and you had to be, okay, so she's the breadwinner. She's mm. um, clearly feminist and um, in charge of so much in her mm. life and her family's life. And yet balancing this egomaniacal husband mm. who's a giant man child and you've got a teenage boy and you're like h- holding everyone's emotions and trying to manage so much. I mean, what, what was that like? Just tell us about this experience of becoming. Okay. Deaf. So I don't even know if I've ever shared this story, but, um, I was, Emily was one. Mm-hmm. So I have three girls. Um, Emily's the middle and she was one. I was still nursing her. I was working on a show called American Dreams on NBC. And I had a nice little recurring role. It was perfect because I wanted to be a mom. This was my lifelong dream. I mean, I had tunnel vision when it came to my career, but being mom was number Mm. one by far. And so I was recurring on, it was perfect, perfect blend of being a mom. And I was still nursing. And when I nurse, man, I mean, you guys have seen me. It's (laughs) it's not a pretty sight. I mean, it's like, a, it's it like, on who you ask. well, <laughs> <laughs> like cover of jugs magazine, you know, like, so nursing and I refused to pump because I think that was my excuse to never be away from the baby. So I would have someone bring the baby mm-hmm. to the set and everything. So it was, it was a lot of work. And the last thing I wanted was a full-time gig, but then this audition came up for one tree hill. Um, and I I turned it, I said, I don't have time. I'm working and I don't have time. And then I started reading it over lunch and fell in love with this beautifully written monologue for this character. And I couldn't let it go. And it was just, you know, with the casting director being put on tape because the show was already airing and they were going to bring in this character for this small arc. There's no (laughs) way I could travel. You know, they're like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go in and do it. And I just couldn't get Deb out of my mind. I had not even seen the entire script. I just knew that it was beautifully written, this character. Mm. And then I heard that I was in the mix, which means Mm -hmm. being considered. Then I heard that they were going local for the role. Oh, interesting. And I was pissed. (laughs) And I said, I told my agent that I'm going to find a relative who lives near North Carolina and I'm going to be a local. And she said, you can't, you know, you can't. I said, no, I'm doing it. I'm going to do that. And I found a cousin who I'd never met. What? Gave (gasps) gave, Gave them my address and said, this is where I'm local. I was within, I think it's 250 miles or something. I don't know, something crazy, but I, I, you know, I had the address and they set up a meeting with Paul on the weekend and it was just me. And I came in, I read, and it was instant connection. And so they hired me as a guest star local. Oh oh my God. Oh my gosh. Couple episodes and, um, the Finn cannons, you remember? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. They were amazing and they, you know, helped me out. I think they put me up even though I was a local. Um, Anybody who then, doesn't you know, know, the Finn Cannons were our local casting directors who mm-hmm. like were basically yeah. situated My right favorites. there at the studio. Yeah. On they're the wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, the rest is history then, you know, they ended up keeping the character around. But yeah, so I, I love telling actors this story because, mm. you know, if you, if you know something and instinctually you're thinking this is your thing, just go for it and do what you need to do. So yeah, oh that's what happened. And then they ended up making her a regular. It's so cool to me how, you know, Deb is clearly a confident woman, but then there's also this really sexy element between her and mm. Dan in this episode, because it would be so easy to show like a combative thing. Like he's so mm-hmm. loathsome that for his wife to come in and be affectionate with him, but also hold him Mm -hmm. accountable. Mm It's just a really nice duality that not everybody could have pulled off, Barbara. Like you handled Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, You know, you see, like I said, the spiral of not only Deb, but their relationship. I think she does figure out who he truly is. But, um, you know, also the, you know, the parallel of the way Nathan treats his girls 
Yeah. Um, you know, there's so many parallels in the show and I maybe am only seeing them for the first time watching the show now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think some of that had to do with Paul and I just getting along really well too. Mm. I mean, it was easy for me to bring that warmth because I really liked Paul yeah. um, and he made me laugh. And I think Dan made Deb laugh and they had history mm. and, um, you know, he was lovable. Yeah, that was the thing. I was wondering at one point we were watching and I said, why did she marry this guy? Mm. Ugh. Yeah. But, you know, when you <laughs> see him being tender with, with Deb mm. in the moment about basketball, then it goes south. But, you know. You could see a little a little hint of that. Yeah. And he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, well, that's that. Yeah. I'm not even sure I knew how cute he was then. I mean, I know he was always yeah. good looking, but I'm watching it now going, you're cute. Super cute. That palate. Oh, my God. <laughs> he, was. So he was the Diet Coke man. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. oh my that's God. Right. Oh, my yeah. God. You know what <laughs> struck me, Joy, when you asked that question? It, it kind of lit up for me in that scene before. He ruins it and, you know, says it was different. But when he's talking about his athleticism and giving us the window into why it matters so much to Dan, and he talks about what it felt like and how, you know, mm. everything would be quiet and it was just the court. And he says, I wish you could have seen it. Something in my brain was like, ding, ding, ding. And it, it reminded me of in the last episode, when you go to see Karen at the cafe and you say, I know that's your story, but it doesn't have to be ours. I feel like mm. Deb existed in this pocket right after yeah. Dan's kind of glory days, but also some of the harm he did. And there's a tenderness between Deb and Dan that no one else has with him. Mm -hmm. And and you claim it, but you do it really yeah. gently. And it allows for this romance and it allows for you to find him funny. And, and then when you kind of throw the gauntlet down, you do it embodied as Deb in this way that is so firm, but it's gentle. And it's, it's like some real acrobatics. And I wonder if maybe that slight difference in timing just gave her a different experience with him than yeah. anybody else had. Did they tell you what Deb's backstory was? Yeah, no, no, <laughs> I don't know. I think I made up a backstory and I think Paul and I talk yeah. about it. You know, it's great working with him because we were always, always talking about things like that. But I don't even know to this day if I really know the math of where Karen stopped and where Deb took over. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was an overlap. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she was a rebound. I'm not even sure about that. Um, I mean, there was something that Karen found attractive in him too. Mm -hmm. And um, she even seems a lot more level-headed and intelligent than Deb. So what is it with intelligent women who fall into men like this? Um, isn't that the truth? Know, isn't that the truth? We've, all done, about it. It. We've all done We've it. We've all done it. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I should not be throwing stones. I'm in a glass <laughs> house. Well, Peyton you know? with Nathan, we're all watching saying, you know, why, why get out of there, you know, quick run. Yeah. And, you know, who knows? The heart wants what the heart wants. And well, it's also, I guess I'm realizing too that Dan Dan has never been in this situation with Lucas. That whole thing is a new threat for him. So maybe this is like a part of him that's coming out that right. nobody's really seen a lot of mm, before because true. he's never been in this scenario before. Um Am I crazy? Well, I feel like I was told that Deb came from money. And so she was so much more powerful and her family mm -hmm. was more powerful than Dan. And it was her family that bankrolled the dealership. Did that yeah. end up like becoming? Yeah. Like, yes, I think that was part of it. I think you're right. Because I'm watching this yeah. like girlfriends in charge. Like, yes, mm. her, her daddy mm -hmm. is like oh, yeah. the boss. Yeah. So Dan married Deb for money. Not Maybe. even for money, but the allure of like the being power. with a made mm. girl. You know, yeah. like Dan, yeah. mm -hmm. I can see how that would put him in his place because you present mm -hmm. yourself like a girl who knows exactly who she is and yeah. always mm -hmm. has. And I'm sure freshman year in college, that was Foxy. And mm -hmm. and maybe yeah. the antithesis to who Karen was at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, um, yeah. And which makes her back to her spiral even more interesting that she started out as strong as she was. Mm -hmm. And even I forgot, you know, that many seasons later watching it now, I keep pointing to the television because this is where I was watching it. Um, yeah, I, I had forgotten how strong she was. I'm like, whoa, Deb, what happened to you? 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, well, even later on, she, oh, I'm not supposed to talk about later on, am I? Well, anyway. Anyway. we do what we want. <laughs> we do what we want here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll just, we'll have you back later on and talk okay, about it. Okay. All right. Like, good. What, okay. what was your relationship with James like playing his mom? Oh. He was 17. Oh my God, he's so oh. I instantly loved him. He was just a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. And what I really, and I tell this story a lot too. What I loved about James is he was not afraid to ask questions. Um, yes. He was new and you know, he wasn't even that new by the time I was working with him. He had already done the pilot in a few episodes, but if anything came up, he had questions and look at him now, yeah. you know, it was all about learning, um, you know, camera work. Why are we doing this? Why are you putting that light there? He was always asking questions and came to mm-hmm. work so prepared mm-hmm. and was so respectful and even sometimes had a hard time joking around with me <laughs> because he was so respectful and I was yeah. like his mom, you know, and, <laughs> you know, he had to talk to me like his mom Aww. and he was That's so great. sweet. Yeah. He was 17, right? Yeah, he, started? he was little. 17. And I remember, I love the story because when I, he's so tall and when I hugged him and sometimes I'm a touchy person and I would touch his chest, like my baby, you know, my baby. (laughs) And the network gave me a note, called my agent and said, we want her to stop touching his chest. (laughs) It's because it just seems a little bit too close for a mom. Like, God, oh my God, my son. I have my son in a headlock at all times. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Just like for Deb to be touching like his chest. Like, oh, oh, my God, I'm so sorry if I crossed a line. But man, all that makes me think of whoever at the network gave that note. I go, D- were you never hugged as a child? Well, oh, yeah. Are you OK? Too. Well, remember, Women they must also, only touch men in a sexual way. They Gross. recast the guy that played my dad season one because they were like, you two are too flirty. And I was <gasps> like, what? I mean, what? okay, but yeah, so that was something that was really on their radar, I guess. Yeah, I guess well, so. maybe because they were all inviting us out Freudian to bars. <laughs> that's on yeah. Them, yeah, that's <laughs> probably exactly you why. You often see what you do, not what exists. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. That's not too far to you. Gross. <laughs> I was afraid to go near him after that. You know, oh, I don't want to go too oh, close. Oh, that's terrible. I know. What a terrible thing for an actor. You want to be so free and be able to just mm-hmm. be and explore yeah. and touch and touch, fight touch, and be touch. tangible. Yeah. And, oh, and you, but you were such a, hard. you were such a mom behind mm-hmm. the scenes I, as well. And I love, loved, loved that you always had your girls in the trailer. Your mm-hmm. girls were in the hair and makeup trailer oh. from the time they were toddlers Yep. Which is probably why they're so good at what they do now. Because they well, it's why it, it. yeah. it's why they wanted to do what they do now. And I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's, that's you know, this, this is fun. I want to do this. They've worked with so many of us on other projects too. <gasps> like I worked with Emily on Secret Life of Bees. Um, yeah. Which one? Which one of the girls did the movie with Chad? Emily. Emily did. Emily did. Allie just did a movie with um, Austin. Oh, cool. Wow. Allie did. Aww, that's so right cool. at the end of quarantine, they worked together. Um, I never worked with Austin, so I got to know him during that movie. Cool. Um, Cheryl Lee. Em- <gasps> Cheryl Lee yeah. played Emily's grandmother. What? There you go. That's so weird and full circle. Wow. And Cheryl Lee and I were so, just like the entire time. Yeah. Emily's like, do you mind? Can I get to know her too? You know, we were just like <laughs> the entire time. Yeah, I was trying to think. Um, Allie worked with Jackson what um, no way on a, yeah on like three years on a show they were ali was recurring wow. and he was regular oh and so God. we saw his family all the time awesome. um peter kowalski was oh, yeah. natalie's dp on a on a marvel show cool. i mean we've had so, so many cool. crossovers yeah wow. i remember emily coming well i remember natalie coming in the trailer and with in the first you know she would just come in with her giant brown eyes, eyes and her freckles and their cute little blonde hair and she would just smile at you with this beautiful beaming smile and her face was like a sunflower it was Aww. just like yeah. sun the sunlight i just mm-hmm. loved looking at her face looking up at us and then emily would come in with her husky little her voice, voice. <laughs> it's like, it like do you wrong with it she had a sophia voice as a baby I know. I loved it. I was like, are you mine? Come yes. sit with me. Yes, I love it. It, it was I so love. fun for us too, Barbara, that that energy, because you're right. We, you know, we were all out there and we were little kids who thought we were supposed to be grownups. And, yeah. and when you would come in with the kids and we'd all be in the trailer in the mornings, 
it really felt like family. Mm -hmm. It felt like Mm -hmm. home, like to be sitting, you know, having Jojo do hair and holding one of your kids in our laps and chatting. It was like, it it was the most kind of, Yeah. yeah, it was the most wholesome, like safe. There was such a, it was such a gift to have your family on set that oh, way. That means with you. so much. Truly. Um, yeah, truly. You know, when I watch the show, it brings back so many memories of doing the show. It was such a happy time in my life. You know, hopefully the best is yet to come. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But mm-hmm. that decade, I mean, was just the happiest time, possibly mm-hmm. the happiest. And it was because I was on a show I loved with people I love and a character I loved. And then also having my little kids living on the beach, yeah. Wrightsville Beach. There's nothing better than Rachel, Wrightsville Beach. Mm. It was just happy. I, I I felt like I must have done something good. Yes. Okay. So we're going to get into childhood. <laughs> Sound of music. Sound of music. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in my wicked childhood, I yeah. must have done oh. something good. Yeah. yeah. Um, bringing back the musicals. I watch your podcast. Girl. Um, and we watched sound of music during the hurricane when we all had to hunker down in hotel rooms. We watched sound of music over and over. And that's all we did. We watched sound of music. Uh, Maria's school is doing that. That's their next play. Is this spring to sound of music. No, I'm like, can I, can I take the role of Maria away from a high school student? Could I try? <laughs> do it, do it. If you need a Baroness, let us know. Yeah. Yes. Love it. Is she going to be uh, in it? Barbara, you would be such well, a good Baroness. Audition. A Baroness. Oh, she's going to audition. Who does she want to be? She doesn't know yet. We're going to watch the movie and see. I mean, she's she. it's a school-wide production, so they are going to have, you know, all through hi- high school, through kindergarten. So I guess she's 10. Is, does that make her, um, she's too old for Gretel. Le- not Louisa. Weasel, she's too young for L- Louisa. 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 Yeah, probably yeah Louisa. Right yeah. Brigitte, Louisa. Mm-hmm. She's the, the one, one that sticks the frog on the chair, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Everyone at home's like, what? And Sophia's like, you guys in your musical talk. <laughs> no, you want to know what's funny is I'm like, yeah, we did Sound of Music when I was in high school and I did props. Oh, <laughs> but you're so I was like in the back babe. doing all the oh man you do everything, Sophia. I love, I love <laughs> props. They're still my very favorite thing to do. Hey, where did you hang out in Wilmington? Because yeah. you were out at the beach predominantly, right? Yeah, we stayed at the beach the entire time. We ended up, when we, it looked like we were going to be around for a while, we um, bought a house in Landfall. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Which is That's also right. the beach. But um, the first few years, we were renting a house on the beach. You know, our mm-hmm. own, I think it was like $2,500 a month or something crazy. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, that's cheap for being yeah, on the beach. Yeah, that's insane. Um, and you know, that's, that was like our backyard, you know, the oh. kids could just run out and run through those, With the, girls. the brush and the, the white sand. Yeah. And it was just, it was heaven, mm-hmm. you know, it was, you couldn't ask for more. Do you have advice for young women? I mean, you must, because you, you have raised three young women in this industry and for young artists that are up and coming or, you know, even girls who are successful in this business, you know, what, Mm. what are some things that you've experienced and that you feel like, Oh man, I wish I had known this when I was starting out traps that you saw us fall into. I don't know. Mm. I mean, I do wish that I had had someone, you know, I wish I had had some, you know, some sort of mentor, I guess I had to figure it out myself, but, um, you know, it's just so important to keep, I don't know if you can tell a kid this, keep your head on straight, but you know, to have a solid family, you know, to have a life other than this passion that you Mm -hmm. have to Mm -hmm. celebrate every holiday, no matter what, Mm -hmm. you know, keep the things that are, you know, important and things that are tangible, things that, um, you can rely on, Mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you stay close with your family, no matter what, um, your close friends, Mm -hmm. um, just it's just so that it's not the only important thing in your life. Mm-hmm. That's and I've, so that's important. what I've, you know, what I've done with my kids is just always, you know, no matter how passionate you feel about your career, there are other things too. Mm. And so that when it doesn't go your way, you still have these other things. Mm-hmm. I mean, that sounds pretty basic and cliche, but it's not always easy. You know, when, when you're driven, when you just want something so badly, that's mm-hmm. all you can see. You can't see straight. Well, I think especially in a business where we, what you do can be mistaken for who you are. Oh, yeah. When you're a performer, you are embodying someone, but it's not right. you. And it's so important, I think, for artists to understand that there's who you are and there's what you do. Right. 
Exactly. And it's hard in this business, I think, especially when you're young to separate those things. And, you know, if you're the it's kind of young It's hard people, either way. Yeah. And if you're the kind of young girls you, we were, where we were scared to admit there were things we didn't know because we thought we'd get in trouble. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's important. Ugh. Yeah, I wish we'd all been better at crawling into your into your open door and just <laughs> cuddle puddling with you. I wish, I wish. It's good advice yeah. for any profession, though. I mean, mm-hmm. having your touchstones yeah. that exist outside of yeah, yeah work. exactly. Barb, I know, I like you know, you and I are friends on social media. I think are we Facebook friends too? Um, I feel like I've seen you go back to your high school, and we've talked about I like did. your hometown. What Whoa. was like? What was your high school experience? Yeah. Who were you at 16, 17 Ooh. years old? I was like everything. <laughs> yeah, you were. I was. I think I at the end, you know, most likely too. You guys are doing. I think I was most likely to do everything, like some stupid award that I got at the end of the year. (laughs) And I was, you know, a cheerleader and student council and theater and tennis. Mm. And I mean, I would just try to squeeze in as much as I possibly could. Mm. Um, And it was a great experience. And, you know, my kids don't go to school. And sometimes I don't want to use the word regret, but I wonder, you know, what their experience would have been. I mean, they're they're experiencing other things that are amazing, but I, sometimes I yeah. get a little sad that they're not experiencing the high school experience, the college experience. Mm. Um, but that's who I was. I was one tree hill. Yeah, you were. That is so <laughs> cool. Yeah, you were. You that were like so a mix cool. of all the characters. You were Brooke, I, Haley, yeah. and Peyton. Um, yeah. It, but then you were doing theater in Chicago, right? How'd you get involved uh-huh. in that? I entered the Miss Teen Illinois pageant. <gasps> yes, she did. Barbara, where are these pictures? Please. I need these photos. Oh, I have them. Yes, oh my God, I do have them. And I won the talent portion. And yeah, one of did. the judges was um, an agent in Chicago. And so I signed with her and I started doing, you know, commercials and little roles and a lot of theater in Chicago and stayed there for a while. And then I, um, I went to Northern Illinois, but I would still audition in Chicago. I would go mm-hmm. back. I wanted to go to a college where I could still audition mm-hmm. in the big city. And so I did that for a while. And then I moved out to LA. Oh my God. I and the theater it. scene is so good there and all the improv. So did you good. get into any of that stuff? I did second city. Oh, you're so cool. <laughs> That's why you were so and good so at all the cool. comedic stuff. And see, yep. To this day. And I was wondering, Joy, if you feel the same, because well, all of you, all of you infuse comedy into things. And that's why I love that. I love taking any role and just trying to find the comedy in it or the lightness of it. That's mm-hmm. life. And so people can relate to it. And I, you know, I'm watching Deb at the beginning. She wasn't, she was pretty heavy. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of comedy. And hopefully after I, you know, got to know the writers a little bit more, they thought, you know, oh, we can maybe make her a little oh, yeah. goofier and she's gay. Oh, you got there. And, hmm. and I liked it so much more. Did you ask for that? Did you ever ask them to, to lighten I her think, up or to give you comedy? I think I just told them how much I loved it. Positive reinforcement. Mm-hmm. You know, if something came in with a little bit of comedy, I would say, oh, I love this, love this, love this. I didn't, you know, I wasn't a complainer. I complained about my wardrobe. Mm-hmm. A lot. <laughs> you didn't Let's talk the about juicy the juicy suit. track suit. <laughs> and I, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't appreciated that mm-hmm. I ever had anything negative to say, but I wasn't letting up on that wardrobe. Like my pleated tan pants that, mm-hmm. you know, at the time you guys were all wearing like those low right. They were so cute at the time. I was yeah. like, you know, like mom. You were in mom capris. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, man. Taylor, like. Yeah. And here we are watching the episode and I'm like, where are the top of our pants? They owe us eight <laughs> inches of fabric. Just pull them it's off. so cute though. You guys could pull it off. Oh, it was so cute. They really did. They treated parents on TV very mm-hmm. differently than, than they do now. There was kind mm-hmm. of this like unsexy, let's dumb no. you down. And you had mm-hmm. had Nathan when you were like 18 years old. So you were a young mom. You're playing yeah. like 35 yeah. years old, which is younger than we are now, you know? So yeah. the idea of like, like if someone put me in tan slacks, I'd be mortified. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was very beige. Um, you know, I spent my entire adult life being on YA projects when I'm not a YA. Mm-hmm. And 
I just feel this responsibility. I don't want kids to fast forward through the adult roles, you know, like uh, through the adult yeah. scenes. I want them to find the adults just as interesting. And you don't want to be the stereotypical parent mm, ever. 100%. It's just boring. Yeah. It's boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want flaws and I want, you know, and dimension. Wh- and And where does this idea that moms are somehow sterile, where does yeah. that come from? Yeah. Like you're a hot mom. Word. I'm well, into it. You're all hot yeah. moms. Oh my God. Sophia and the three hot moms. That's this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, ladies. <laughs> like, I, it's like and I want, babies. but like, I, I appreciate knowing that you don't have to lose yourself or your romance or your fire or your humor because you're right. B- back then, they kind of wanted these parents to just be these you know, tent poles of advice. And then Mm -hmm. they'd like scuttle off the side and, and you really, you rested your humanity and, and, and your femininity back from those khaki pants. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Also, I think the show needed a Karen, you Mm -hmm. know, Karen Rowe, uh, not a Karen, but (laughs) what Karen has been ruined. Um, But there was already a Karen Rowe. I mean, Mm -hmm. let's, let's find something out, you know, let's, let's, let's flaw her up a bit, Deb. And, you know, eventually they figured it out. You know, you didn't need two parents Mm -hmm. like that. Um, Yeah. And I loved her at the beginning, but I loved her a lot more later on. Yeah. What was your favorite? We can talk about stuff coming up. What was your favorite, Mm. favorite Deb shenanigan? I loved all of the war of the roses um, with Dan. I loved all the things. Um, that was by far my favorite. Um, Karen and I, Moira and I had a night on the billboard oh, on yeah. top of the billboard. <laughs> oh, that's painting, right. Painting a mustache on, <gasps> that's um, right. Dan. Oh, and that In was the cat suit. Oh my God. That was possibly, <laughs> I, th- I think it was a juicy suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That's what we're going to send out this year is wrap gifts for the podcast. Just juicy yep. suits oh, to everybody. Yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll hunt them down on eBay. <laughs> I have them all of mine. You no. do? Oh, oh, I have green, <gasps> wine, black, the wine, white, the wine. Yeah. And my girls are stealing them all the time. But do you remember the show, the store Oliver? Oh yes. 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 Okay. This is a store in Wilmington. Yes. And this is what I did. I would shop there. I would put things on hold. And I told them when our wardrobe person would come in shopping for characters to push them in her, her <gasps> face, in their face, oh, in her face. You're and so say smart. This, Barbara was in here and these are the things she really loves. That's genius. You're and so smart. slowly but surely she started picking up a few things and... And I remember being told, like, you've got to let, you know, you've got to let the whole wardrobe thing go. But unfortunately, that is some bas- high level thinking. Basically, it starts with wardrobe and your look and your yeah. hair. And your, I mean, basically, yeah. when people are watching, that's what they see. Um, did you have hair wars, working. too? Did you have wars over your hair? The style? I did. And what you, mm, I did. We all had hair wars. That was yeah. Hair that's wars. Thing. That's the name of our memoir. Hair <laughs> yeah. wars. Oh. I always have hair wars. I, I am mm. actually pretty happy to hear that you guys had them too because i had a lot of them oh yeah they were yeah when it came brutal. from the, the we were always told it came from the network but did i it, know did it we question everything no now. i think there was maybe one or two people in particular that just had an idea of what they wanted women to look like or girls to look yeah. like or whatever yeah. yeah yeah i also put my hair up a couple times and that was next pretty quick <laughs> um yeah i feel like i recall there being an episode if I'm remembering correctly, where you had your hair in a ponytail in a hot tub and you looked great. Oh, hot tub dab is definitely. a dangerous dab. That's all I'm saying. I think... You look great with your hair up. That was with Antoine. Mm-hmm. Which is we my were... favorite Deb storyline. Sorry, guys. My dog <laughs> is like barfing on the rug and my child <laughs> oh, is running yum. through. And I'm just like, this is what being a working mom is about. Barbara yep. taught us yes. how to do this. You just smile and you power through. That's what I love to do. So yeah, yeah. No, Antoine and Deb was my favorite chunk of time on the show because I thought it was the right amount of naughty, Mm. yeah. But also like really endearing because you two were cute together. You're still cute together. 
And his that was the comedy was right there, man. You guys just so, let each other out. So good. So he's so good, and mm-hmm. his bark is so much worse than his bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just you wait, girl. Like, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah okay. And that's when we get to that. He would be kind of nervous. <laughs> and, you know, oh. like, oh. I had one dress that they rigged because he had to do and like undo my dress in front. And so they had to rig it up. So they, cause it was in the script, you know, yeah. hmm. and, um, I was showing him how it works. He's like, Oh, you know, okay, that's fine. You know, we'll just do it. Like what happened to the Antoine? I know like Sweeping. so respectful. And I was, I think three weeks after having Allie, oh my God. um, wow. I was in the, the, the pool with my hair up <gasps> and nursing and topless. Oh my God, Barb. And wow, you're a superwoman covering like this with Antoine. And he was so sweet. And I was afraid I was going to get like, I'm sorry, this is team. T- no, it's, like, it's not. Though. No way. Not on this. You're show. like, I was lactating in the yeah, pool. I was going to get girls. milk in the pool, was, but he's a dad. So he got yeah. it. He was so sweet. You know, Aww. like, and then he was hugging me and he's like, oh, gotcha. I got you, girl. Like, no one's going to see anything. And he was so, I love him so much. He's so oh, good. I love him right so after much. I gave birth to George, I did a movie with Antoine. It was like, I don't know, two months later. And I was at that point where like the baby's not sleeping and I also have to be on set and I'm losing my mind. And Antoine would come over to my apartment <gasps> and just rock my baby. Like no he way. he knows how to do it with <gasps> one arm in a way that like mm. the child falls asleep God like bless that. that man. Yeah. Yeah, oh. he's got good dad energy. He's a good dad. Yeah. He's so good. Antoine's like, I remember I was dealing with like boy drama and I remember calling him and he would sit on the phone with me for like two hours and just yeah. talk me through it. And here's yeah. what you do. And here's what you say. Well, what happened? And like my little therapist. Oh, yeah. I love him. You got mm. to kiss all the cute boys on the show because you also ended up kissing Craig at some point, right? Oh. I was hoping for two seconds. I thought maybe we were going to end up together and it oh, never that happened. that would have been good. Oh, and I did know that you had good. a crush on him, Joy. Ah! And you I did know that? You did. I did know. I didn't think you ever told me. Maybe you did, but I don't think you did. I just knew. It's probably because I was just fawning over him all the time, like <laughs> staring longingly across the room. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, like, I was hoping, I was hoping, but it never happened. Um, oh. Barb, we get some of these oh. like deep thought questions that we are supposed to answer, but I want to know some of yours. Um, Mm -hmm. One of them was like, if you have a friend coming to town, what experience in Wilmington would you tell them like, you cannot miss this? Mm. Indochine. Oh my God. Yes. Is it still Uh, open? That garden. It's still there. So right before quarantine, um, we, there was a convention there. Yeah. I don't remember if we were all, we were all there together. I don't, I don't remember, but it was in Raleigh, I think. But anyway, I went to Wilmington and I spent my birthday in Wilmington and Aww. everybody took me out to Indochine. And it's so good. It's still good. It's still amazing. But, you know, obviously the beach, the beach is like no other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just something yeah. special about going to the beach, going to Wrightsville Beach and hanging. Um, that all East Coast beach is so warm. So too. much. So great. And, you know, all of my best friends are still there. I accumulated best friends and kept them to this day. Mm. Um, we're in Toronto and we're driving back. We're actually going to stop in um, in Wilmington on the way back. Oh, you oh. are? Yeah. And so where's everybody. going That's back great. to? Where are you guys like? LA. Yeah. LA. Okay. Yeah. Wait, how long are you going to be in Toronto? We're here till mid-August. Ugh, I get there in October. Damn. You do? Your ship's yeah. passing in the night. Just whoop. So close. Okay. I have a great place I'm staying. I should tell you about it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, okay. hold it. This yeah. is why our club it. remains because yeah. we have spire webbed from Wilmington yeah. all across right. North America and even further. Yeah. Um, That's right. Sweet. Okay. So the girls are taking over television. Mm-hmm. You and Olivia are working on a show right now. What, what do you think is the reason with all this new content out there, people are still drawn to the show? You know, it's funny. I'm watching it now for the first time with Allie, who's 13. Mm -hmm. And she said, just last night, she said, I miss shows where people just talk to each other. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship show. And there are no, you know, special effects or big Mm -hmm. car chases or, you know, she said, I just like watching these people talk to each other. Mm -hmm. 
And wow, for a 13, year that's a 13 year old. And she, and I said, you know, you don't have to watch this. She said, no, I'm And last night when I went to bed, I could hear that she was watching it in her bedroom as she was going to sleep. And that made me feel so good. Oh Little does she know gosh. what I do later on in the episode. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And there's I binging, know. binge watching now. Oh, yeah. So it's not like she's going to have yeah. to wait three years to see. Yeah. She's yeah. going to come downstairs I mean, to breakfast one morning and you'll know. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just character driven, you know, and that's what drew me to the show mm-hmm. to begin at the beginning. It's just, you know, it's just all about the characters yeah. mm-hmm. and, you know, just so all of them so well-rounded and mm-hmm. I don't know, it's hard to find shows like that these days. It really is. We need to write one. Yeah. Barb, yeah. I want to work together again. Listen, guys, yeah. I was doing okay. this Christmas movie in Louisiana and we had to, the last second we had to like get somebody to come play the superintendent of all the schools and they were trying to cast local. And I was like, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. And they're like, well, fine. Who do you have Hillary? It's like, I've got Barbara Allen Woods. (laughs) And she shows up and within 30 seconds of being there, every member of the crew is in love with her. Willie Garson is following Uh her around like a puppy. I love Willie. Everyone (laughs) eating out of the palm of her hand. And they're like, where did you find her? Because it was really this like one dimensional character on paper. Yeah. And Barbara came in and made her warm and funny and so likable and like the Mm. hero of the movie. And everyone, yeah, everyone was just like, please, please, let's write a whole movie where she's here the whole time. And it was an all night shoot, which is always extra special (laughs) because we all get (laughs) super giddy and, you know, like you barely make it through. It was fun. Fun. You you have that special thing that I think Sharon Lawrence also has, Barbara, where you walk into a room and it's like, I love Sharon too. And you 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 don't walk, you like float, you like glide float. into Aww. the room and everyone stops and the, the mm-hmm. energy in the room shifts and suddenly you just notice everybody's kind oh of like God, watching, you looking at you. That's no, it's true. true. You, you and Sharon Lawrence have that and it's really amazing to watch well, happen. I love her. You know, we know each other because of One Tree Hill and we never even worked together, but we have run into each other. And so we really bond over the show, even though we never worked together. Mm. And she's amazing. Aww. Yeah. I would love to well, Should we her. do Most Likely Two, girls? Yeah. Yes. Barbara, you're going to help for us this with Barb? Most Likely Two. Yeah, yes. please do it with us. It can be a real life cast member of ours or a character. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, this is so cute. Yeah, listen, we're fun? getting advanced here. <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> kiss and tell. <laughs> Most likely to kiss and tell. All right. <gasps> this is a dangerous one. Hmm. I mean, I never kissed anybody on the show. Nobody wanted to kiss me, so it probably <laughs> would have been me had anyone kissed me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't provided that opportunity. I would have told everybody. Um, <sighs> yeah, kiss and tell, you know, Ooh. you know who kiss and told in real life, ladies, Ooh. one Barry Corbin. <gasps> so I Ooh. used to oh, hang yes. with Barry Corbin at that bar downtown, <laughs> Charlie Brown's. I can tell you a few Barry Corbin stories. Please <gasps> do. Yes, please. <laughs> he's a kiss and tell. Well, he's just, yeah. I mean, he, he went forward a few times. <sighs> Let me just say, <laughs> you are your facts, Barb. How could he not? Yeah, but you know, we're being public, and I felt a little bit under the table. You know, just like <gasps> checking it out to see if I was interested. But you know, in a respectful way, I was mm-hmm. never like, like just like, grazing Barry. the back of your hand, you know? just like, yeah. would you like to hold my hand? A little footsie. Oh my god! I love him. I love so it. he's a flirt. It's okay. Yeah, he's a flirt. How did how did you? This is actually a good a good segue into this question because. Um, I think this happens a lot, especially right now in this modern age. A lot of young women are not sure how to handle if they're being hit on by somebody that maybe they just don't want to go out with or whatever. And it becomes a really scary and like, oh, I'm be- I'm at work and and I feel and then it becomes an HR thing. But I yeah. think there is an onus on women to just be able to to say like, oh, I'm so flattered. Thank you. But no. And then, of course, if it continues, it becomes a different issue. But how did how do you handle that as, as a I young think, woman? You know, I've put the fear of God in all of my kids, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. because yeah. of all the situations I've been in. And I would never want any of those things to happen to them. Mm-hmm. And I think they have yeah. no trouble saying no. I mean, they mm-hmm. just walk That's away. That's awesome. So it's so fast. cool to see a kid say yeah. no. 
You know, we yeah. weren't yes. groomed to do that. And how do you say no to a um, when you're like like when you're getting hit up? Hey, is, he's checking it out. Is this is this an interesting thing? Like, how do you do that where you maintain the friendship and the relationship in a working environment, but um, you know, still put your boundary up? I don't know. I think it's just more acceptable these days to say no. I don't think that the hitting is going on, hitting on is going on as often as it <laughs> used to. Let's hope it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I have a feeling they say no even when people aren't hitting on them because they're just so afraid they are. You know, I think <laughs> that they, they turn them away like, what are you doing? Would you like some coffee? Get, you know, go away. Not today. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's your perfect. coffee elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, That's funny. So, yeah, you know, that was my predicament in the past. You know, I, I don't want to be on this person's bad side, this person I'm going to be working with for the next six months. Mm. I don't want them to hate me or take it out on me in any way. So that was like the struggle I always went through. Sure. But I just don't see it mm-hmm. as much these days. Thank God. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just But it's don't. also part of the dance of men and women is, you know, somebody making an advance to see like, hey, are you interested? And yeah. then the other person says yes or no. And that's just, that's the dance. That's what we do. Yeah. 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 It's who true. would have kissed and told though? Like who would have put out? Oh, Deb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I did want to say something because I thought about this because I so respect the fact that you guys were able to say no at your young. And, you know, some of you were, you know, relatively new, but you had no problem saying no. And you, you had integrity and you protected your characters. Mm. And I think because of that, my character got more interesting because I think somebody, when they were trying to like spice up the show a little bit, they're like, Oh, these girls, you know, they won't do it. Like, I'm like, I'll do it. <laughs> you, know, <I'll> <laughs> um, you need someone. Yeah. I'll do gratuitous sex. Yeah. yeah. It'll be me. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, like I never volunteered, but I, I think they you. saw that maybe I was game, yeah. you know, so you I had part- kids. So they know you were putting out. In they the, were like, like, not that they, yeah. Like, I don't know. You know, it's like fourth choice, you know, no way but they would have rather had it be you. It was more age appropriate, though, because think about it. Mm-hmm. As like real women, we come into our yeah. sexuality not at 18, not at 16. Exactly. Yes. Certainly it is something yes. that like in your 30s, you are jamming, you know, and so it made more sense for yes. Deb to be the leader mm-hmm. there. And it was also I think that when sex is funny, it's mm-hmm. less offensive. Mm-hmm. And I always try to incorporate like these scenes that sometimes many times cross the line. If they're funny, they're more acceptable somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're less I'm not threatening. not sure why that is, but less threatening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good way. From now on, every time I have to do a sex scene, I'm going to take that note. Make it funny. And I'm going to make it funny. Make it funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There'll be a director at some point who's just like, who told you this? Well, funny sex, funny sex is way better <laughs> sex. Um, all right. So did you have any kiss and tell candidates? Oh, man. I mean, I feel like Brooke Davis was a bit of a kiss and teller, but I but I also feel like it was very to try to be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, who were yours? Oh, um, well, well, Barry, I think is a great is actually a really great. I think. Yeah. Um, I, you know, my first instinct, I was like, is it Brooke? But actually I don't think it's Brooke at all. Mm. I think she's much more of a, it's all bravado with Brooke. I think she she holds a lot close to her heart, a lot of private moments. Um, I don't know, Antoine, Antoine's (laughs) definitely, oh yeah, he loves to tell He tells a lot. He tells a lot. He does. You know what's so funny, Joy? I actually had a thought about that, that kind of Brooke Davis bravado based on our conversation from last week when I was watching uh, you do that scene in the poncho with James Aww. and Hillary, we were like, God, you're just playing. It's, it's so, so sweet. It's so sweet. And he's kind of flirting and, but, and you're just like really hard to read. And, and you can tell that she's flattered, but also wants to hold it in. And I was like, man, see, Joy actually knew how to be chill around boys. <laughs> and then there's me who's supposed to be like, you know, the head cheerleader and like she's really into dudes and I just watch myself like really overacting because I'm like is this how people do it this is how people do it right (laughs) they make like really big faces and stuff and they're like "Ah." and I just was like oh god yeah you'd been doing stuff man and you were you were chill it did work no we we learned so much about Brooke because of that because 
she she didn't i think that was the uh the doubling down that she would do instead of totally. retreating which is what Haley did she just retreated within herself brooke was like i don't know what i'm doing so i'm just gonna th- throw everything out there and you know try and get it right you know I it's see. just a different way of hand- handling the same emotions right. it's, it's mm-hmm. cool it's so funny. I love it. Barbara, it makes me it. so happy and confident to know that your daughters are the next mm-hmm. generation of of leaders and mm-hmm. and role models for young girls out there cuz I know how you raised your girls. We know how you are yeah. and you you did it right, you know? They're yeah. beautiful oh. and smart and strong and confident in a way that I wish we'd been. Mm-hmm. You were, you absolutely were all of those adjectives. I, I looked up to you guys so much as the adult on the show. I looked up to you guys. I really did. Um, you were, and you are now such amazing role models to my girls and we all follow everything you do. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, I'm just, you know, as the mom on one tree hill, I'm so <laughs> proud of all three of you. I love you. <laughs> Thanks. Barbara. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have to get back to Wrightsville beach like soon. Yes. You know? Yeah. For we sure. need to see you in person soon. And I want to see baby. I want to see all your babies and oh my God, oh my God yes. I know they're not babies anymore, but oh, I want to see everybody. We need a reunion. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe when you get home from Toronto, before I go to Toronto, we'll steal Hillary from the East Coast and we'll okay. steal her all snuggles. Let's do, do it. it. Sleepover. Yes. We'll bring yeah. the juicy right. suits. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's it. <laughs> we, we have to. Joy Joy always wanted to have tea parties. She's yes. like, I'm going to do a tea party. I want to do it. So we'll do a tea party. We still have yeah. to do a tea party. I'm so down. I, I still do wait. tea parties. It happens. I love it. I, I love, love it. it. We love you so much, Barbara. We love you. you have to come back as Deb spirals. You're coming oh, yeah. back. Please. I want to come back for the uh, with. I want to come back with Antoine. Yes, yes. for the whole thing. We'll <laughs> oh, talk about. Yes. It. We'll see what was going Let's through his mind. Yes. yes, I love that idea. Yes, Great. awesome. We oh, love we you love so it. much. Thank love you for you joining you, us, Barb. babe. Thanks for having Bye. me. Everybody, we Thank say hi. you. <laughs> Hugs to the gals. I will. Bye. 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 Wow. Oh. I love her. Guys, Barbara Allen Woods. She brings Ooh, such hoo. peaceful yeah. energy oh, to everything. everything. Yes. Everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. Yeah. And you know, Barbara really does remind me that we get to own it all. Yeah. We get to own our professionalism and our intellect and our funny and our silly and our sexy. And she's such an incredible example just by being that you can be so fully embodied I mean, mm-hmm. what a role model. Yeah. And, and I, I love agree. that she, I'm so scared of this industry for my kids because I had mm-hmm. such a wonky experience with it. Mm-hmm. And Barbara did the opposite. Yeah. Barbara was like, yeah. we're not going to be scared. We're going to own it, you yeah. know, and yeah. and has kept her girls really safe. I mean, Barbara committed to being on set with all three of her girls, like at the same time. She's a superhuman. I don't know how mm-hmm. she did it. Um, Mm -hmm. but they're just, you can tell their dad is an assistant director. They know how to show up and work. They know what's up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, Mm. it's the thing. I mean, it does make me scared. Maria is a, is actually a really good little actress. Um, and she's got good instincts and, but she does theater right now. Cause to me, theater is a team sport, but you know, film for kids is, can, is really as so many of, you know, we, it doesn't take a genius to take mm-hmm. a look around and see all the kids that have gone off the rails because they grew up in this business. But Barbara has um, managed to do an amazing job with her girls. They're all such good, solid people and smart and stick up for themselves and they're professional and it gives me hope. Mm. It's pretty cool. Hey, welcome back. Okay, we have some listener questions. Okay, okay. okay. From Brianna, in episode five, on the anniversary of Peyton's mom's death, why does Mm -hmm. Brooke seem so unaware? They're best friends, and I just Mm. feel like she had no idea what day it was. So I'm hoping you guys will talk about it. And when you um, get to that episode, hopefully Mm. it was a production error. I just feel like Brooke is so much better Mm. than that. And, you know, how did she not realize about this important day for her best friend? So talk, tell Mm -hmm. us about that. Uh, well, listen, listen, listen. We have to also <laughs> keep in mind this was 2003, right? Mm-hmm. So this is like pre 
Facebook reminders. This is pre iPhone mm-hmm. with Google Calendar and things mm-hmm. like that. Like, oh I God, can't we were still it. using paper calendars on yeah. our walls. Babe, you weren't going to write that out in your school planner, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, mm-hmm. it was just a different time. And I think yeah. remembering things like that are much easier now. Um, mm, that's a have, really good point. Yeah, we have constant reminders now, but also, I don't know that the writers, when we started the show, understood the depth of our characters' chemistry. Uh-uh. You know, that we really were a love story. Yeah, they they didn't, for sure. And and I do think that, first of all, thank you for that, because as soon as Joy read this question, I like wanted to barf. Because oh. it was always a thing that upset me. Well, I didn't and come to your is... wedding either, babe. Like, we did. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's true. Some gets messy. The baby's sick. Yeah. Um, oh, man. <laughs> but it, no, it's very true. But I I think um, this is really indicative when you guys have heard us talk about the ways that we went to bat for our characters and fought for them to be more wholly represented and complete young women and women. This is exactly it. We were really still five episodes in, although, you know, Peyton had this incredible storyline about grief that I think was the most adult thing we had done on the show so far. We were still kind of being treated as these secondary characters. It was two boys. They were the stars. It was about basketball. And we were the girls. And we'd be used where they needed us. Mm -hmm. And especially with Brooke, you know, because I was added in in episode one they were like, ah, captain of the cheer squad. Like, well, she's that stereotype. And and these were the kinds of things that we would bring to the table over and over and over again and say, it wouldn't be like this. Girls yeah. wouldn't miss this. We would never ignore this. And, yeah. you know, woof. It was brutal at times. And also, let's be honest, to hear like, well, well that's not really the point of the episode. And it's like, oh, Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. But, but it was like it was a fight all, you know, all, the whole time cuz like when Brooke got beat up and Peyton's like, "Oh, you fell down the stairs." You know, like there were right. certain things that mm-hmm. you can only fight so many fights, especially yeah. when you're, you know, it's season 1 you're and you're brand new. And there are things that's a really good point. There are things that are required for us as performers mm-hmm. to suspend disbelief to service the story. Yeah. yeah. Like when that happened to Brooke and Peyton had to go, oh, my God, honey, like what a horrible fall you took. Because yeah. if you'd God. known, then we wouldn't have had the drama of the episode. Yeah. If yeah. Brooke had been there for Peyton in the way that I would think she would have been, Peyton wouldn't have been alone for the whole episode crying in her car. Yeah. So th- sometimes get, there are these gives requirements Brooke somewhere to go. But you know, I mean, every That's flaw true. gives your character somewhere to go. So it it, it was it yeah. worked in that way. Well, the but, redemption's yeah. so much sweeter, you know. Like yeah. then when Brooke shows up, you know, it just the yeah the redemption yeah. sweeter. But it would have been so um, nice to see you guys connect in that way and I see know. what a good friend Brooke was right off the bat. Her. Just know yeah. in real life when things ever went south, we were all yeah. hugging and kissing, you know, That's back in right. our trailers. <laughs> I mean, I will say, because this is now the second time I've thought of it um, in reference to this, because because this is about grief and so much of, you know, so many of the big moments in this episode happen on the quad. I'll never yeah. forget um, shooting at school one day on the quad. And it was the day my grandfather died okay. and Hillary, you were the person like you, my, I got the call from my mom and you just like, I didn't know I was falling, but until I realized you'd caught me. And like, we went through that stuff in that school, like in those places together, all of us, like our real grief, our real loss, like you lost people. I mean, we yeah. lost I people. Scott, we, and you were the first yeah. person I saw. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. we were so blessed to be there for each other in in life. And that is something I I cherish that we got it right. Behind some the, of the scenes. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, behind the scenes. <laughs> and when we didn't get it yeah. right all of the times, um, you know, on, on camera. Yeah. it's It's nice when you feel like it's real and i think that's mm-hmm. why the audience wants to know like oh how could this be but um the real stuff was real so if if yeah. you were feeling like oh this relationship deserved more just know that it did exist just mm-hmm. like off camera 
<laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And, and that kind of leads into the next question that we have. Um, let's Mackenzie wants to know if I kept any of the albums that Peyton had in her room. And like, oh, hey, know. this is a tough subject because no. Um, mm -hmm. When I left the show, it was kind of unceremonious. I, mm -hmm. after the fact, somebody snuck me Ellie's mm -hmm. leather jacket. Uh, our costumer knew that that was something that would mean a lot to me and it was never going to be seen mm -hmm. again. And so she passed it like through a secret channel of people mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. to me. Um, but the only things I have from the show are things that Soph stole when the show ended <laughs> and mailed to me. <laughs> she was like, I have a box. Um, I have some things for you. That so was even so though, emotional. Like, Peyton never came back. The real life relationship behind the lens mm. is what you guys hoped it would be. You know, like, yeah, yes, my best friend yeah. stole my stuff. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, I remember that was so hard. You know, you even referenced Brooke's wedding. Like, Joy and I were like, this feels weird. Yeah. But you got to you got to like do it. And and I think there was obviously there was such a saving grace for us in in getting to have the safety of of Brooke and Haley after all those years, but, oh man, I mean, this is a fast forward, but I remember the end of the show when we were filming the Tree Hill movie and we <sighs> rebuilt Peyton's room and, yes. you know, the bookshelves, the records, it had all been in storage. That's something that the audience may not know too. Like yeah. guys, they keep everything in boxes and it's cataloged and like they break the sets down and they literally pack up buildings Walls. in storage containers. And yeah, like the, it's all somewhere. And I walked into, you know, Peyton's room with the records and I just was, I just started sobbing. <gasps> Everyone was like, oh God. And I was like, this is really weird. I'm feeling very emotional. I grew up in this room on television and also in real life. Um, but yeah, it was a trip. And that, that was kind of when, when we were like getting into the last two weeks, I just started stealing stuff yeah. and mailing it to people. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to take these. I'm going to take that frame. Came in handy I, you know, because I was like, weeks. I was like, I know these things are just going to go like in a storage container and yeah. no one's ever going to see them again. And I don't like that. I'm too sentimental. I feel like a lot of our stuff got sold in auctions and things like that. Yeah. So if anybody has like mm -hmm. my old clothes, like I'll buy them back. I'm mm -hmm. not. <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> hey, guys, can I have my stuff back? Um, <laughs> no, I kind of like that. Yeah. Joy, we have a question from Carla. She wants to know. Ooh, oh, girl, did you get to theme? keep that Cracker Jack uh, bracelet from Haley's first tutoring session with Nathan? Um, did you get to keep it? So... I'm, I'm going to ruin, I'm going to burst the bubble. Like, I don't want to ruin the fantasy oh with this. I'm like, there's a story here. No, it's not a real story. Do you want to make it's, something up? It's, it's actually <laughs> so non-exciting that the prop department had like a, a giant plastic bag full of these bracelets. And so there wasn't just so one. there wasn't just one. It was like, and it, I'm it was a like big 40? plastic bag. He would give them out to like extras and people who were like, oh, I want one, I want one. Oh. So the actual original oh, one that he put on my wrist sweet. just went right back into a plastic bag. So somebody out there has the actual original one, but there's no <gasps> way we would ever know uh, who, which one well, it did is. Did you get to keep any? Yeah, oh, yeah, I have bag one of somewhere. Bracelets? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I do have okay, one, good. but it was just a random one from a plastic bag, you know. <laughs> So the sentiment that's is there, kind of but nice too, though, because like now every girl who has one is looking at her wrist like <laughs> this could be the way. Like it's is like Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka. Is it this one? <laughs> yeah. I've got yes. a golden too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Wait, wait, and and Carla has a a sort of part two of her question, which I don't think I know the answer to about you either, Joy. Were you ever a tutor in high school? No, you didn't. No, you I did it. terrible in school. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you really? I would have figured you were like the straight A girl. No. No. I was. Wow. I was B, B's naughty. and C's at best. If I ever got an A, it was like throw her a fucking party. I mean, no, I just what? don't. Joy, you're I, such a good actor. I don't wow. learn well in classroom environments. Now, whenever I was on set and I had a personal teacher, and I would fly through my curriculum and I would do really, really well mm. because I had one on one and somebody that could work with. My my brain learns um, and processes information in a way that's just not conducive with the the public school um, mm. system and the cl classroom environment. I ha I ask a lot of questions because my brain kind of works where like it's not enough for me to just know what the answer is. I need to know why that's the answer, and I need so that I can mm. understand 
you know, don't don't just tell me that if I put the toast in and I click it down, it's going to heat it. Why is it heating it? How does that work? I need to understand. And teachers don't have yeah. time for that. So I could never just learn the answer and then copy it down. My my memory wouldn't hold things like that. So I did pretty badly in school, mm. to be honest. Do you guys have a weird short term memory thing yeah. from doing TV for as long as we did? Hundred percent. Because whoa, yeah. I, I've realized that when you get trained to learn 10 pages of dialogue a day Mm -hmm. and then forget it and learn 10 more the next day, man, sometimes I'm like, what happened? There's a story. It was my birthday. Wait, (laughs) start start the story. And if someone gets four lines in, then it's exactly like the reaction you had watching the scene on the bridge. I'm like, oh, I know this dialogue. I know this. I remember. You guys, I remember every word of the scene with Lucas. It was the weirdest wow. deja vu feeling to watch that scene back and be like, oh my God, I, was it maybe my audition scene? There's no way that scene was written when I auditioned. I don't know it why it's just come, it's like stapled to my brain. I know every single one of those words. I could do that That's scene insane. tomorrow. It's just Maybe because you had to do it over a weed whacker? <laughs> Over and over and over. Yeah. You know what? It was the trauma of the weed whacker. It just cemented it. Yeah. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. Um, Sophia, though, you you were different because you can read a book and remember what was in the book and have intelligent conversations about it long after you've you've read it. I remember this about you. I can't. I mean, I can process information, make decisions about it. She's got a photographic memory. Yeah. But you like, Mm. you remember That's really kind. I, so this is, this can be a conundrum. This is really good for me as an advocate. I can rattle off social science data till I'm blue in the face. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. But when I tell you, I do not know my mother's cell phone number. (laughs) I don't know it. I know the first three digits, but like, I don't, I don't know it. I just don't. There are basic things I cannot remember, but I can tell you a quote from some Dutch report on gender pay parody from 1993. (laughs) I don't know why I'm like this. And sometimes I look at people I love and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Thank you for loving me. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that is. (laughs) Okay. So we have a huge episode next week. What's next week? It's episode six. Every night is another story. Oh, that's a good one. Party? I think it's the party. What party? Is it the party? Wait, the beach house party? The party? The fan? I think it might be the fancy house party, like dresses and suits. The one where I had to rip Chad's shirt off. I don't remember (sighs) any of this. Red solo cups? Yeah. It was a it was a tough one. Man, I have no idea. I I guess you guys will all catch up with me. We're all gonna find out next Mm -hmm. week. (laughs) We have questions. All right, so you guys have to watch the episode because we're watching the episode. Um, oh, yeah. And in the meantime, tell all your friends because we're having a great time here. We love it. And thank you guys for your questions. These are so just lovely and thoughtful and sentimental and they mean a lot. Yeah. So if you are feeling some overwhelming feelings like Peyton in this episode, there is mm-hmm. no shame in asking for help. The mm-hmm. National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is one 800 273 8255 Help is there. There are people that love you and care about you. And so we want you to, to stay healthy. Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at dramaqueensoth. Or email us at dramaqueens at iheartradio.com. See you next time. We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens.